ML4E is a set of Pyraminx algorithms that solve all of the L4E cases from either a Y or Y prime rotation. With L4E, you always have to have the unsolved piece in the layer to the front. This means that you often either have to rotate or solve the V from a different angle than you would like to, having to, for example, do B moves. ML4E fixes these problems and can be a really helpful tool if you're looking to get better at pyraminx. However, learning ML4E is a step that should happen very late on in your pyraminx improvement, and there are many steps that you need to complete first in order to really see the benefits from ML4E. In this video, I will discuss when you should learn ML4E and what you should be focusing on before learning it. So let's go through what you need to know before you should learn ML4E, a sort of ML4E checklist. First off, I think that you should know all of the alternate L4E algorithms. Now, what are these algorithms? Well, for each L4E case, there are a few different algorithms that you can use. If you've learned L4E, you probably know one for each case, but learning the others is really helpful as you can skip AUFs, making your solves faster. If you don't know these alternate algorithms, you should learn them before learning ML4E. The second thing you should be able to do before learning ML4E is being able to one-look a decent amount of your solves. To understand why, let's think about what would happen if you learn ML4E and couldn't one-look a lot of your solves. Well, you make a V in a way which an ML4E algorithm could be helpful, putting the free edge to the side, and then you rotate and do the standard L4E algorithm. If you're not one looking, you are just going to default back to doing what you know. ML4E is really helpful, but only if you one look it. If you're not one looking, you might as well, and probably will, just rotate and then do the L4E algorithm. If you can't one look a lot of your solves, I would focus on that rather than ML4E. Finally, I think you should average sub three. If you're doing the two points that I discussed previously, then you should be sub three. If not, then you should focus on turning faster and getting better V solutions rather than learning ML4E. If you're not sub three, there are other things that you should be focusing on that will help you improve a lot more than ML4E will. So to recap, to learn ML4E, I think you should know all of the L4E and alternate L4E algorithms. I think you should be one looking a good amount of your solves, and I think you should be sub three. If you're doing all of these things, then ML4E can be a really useful thing to learn.